Hi, this is Jim from realtruth.net and today I just want to talk a little bit about the name of the creator and how it was uh, hidden from us by the translators of the Bible and by the uh, rulers of Judah and yet you can go out on the internet and you can look um, there's many many videos that tell you why it was hidden and what the purpose I mean I don't know if it that we know the purpose of it but it was hidden because of when they went into captivity into Babylon, <clears throat> the Babylonians uh, wouldn't speak the names of their gods, and that, and they took assimilated that into their religion, uh, into the uh, Judah's religion, and. <clears throat> that may not be the right word to put in there, but they just assimilated the ways of the pagans into what Yahweh had given them. Now, in Exodus 3.14 uh, is where we first learn in our Hebrew scriptures, uh, in <clears throat> our English Bibles, where the Creator uh, gave to Moses his name, or told Moses what his name was when Moses asked him, Who shall I say sent me? And we'll read it here. Moses said unto, and this word, and we'll come back to this word, uh, G-O-D, but, And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come, unto the children of Israel and say to them the Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you and they shall say to me what is his name what shall I say unto them and then <clears throat> this is where everything went off track in the translation of this to the English Bible now the real issue here is that the men that translated the Bible had the pagan uh, trinity belief in them. And so they brought these philosophies into the translation uh, because their mindset was that uh, Yeshua, the Messiah, was Elohim was the God and so that tainted a lot of the translation but <clears throat> we still use the KJV and the Strong's Concordance and we come down here and Elohim said to Moses I am that I am that's how they translated it but if you really look at the Hebrew you will come down here and you will see that he translated, they, they translated, I am Haya. And that word in Hebrew literally means to exist. In other words, they should have translated it uh, and Elohim said unto Moses, I exist that I exist. That is the true, real, true translation. You can see over here in the um, ancient Hebrew lexicon, exist, I breathe, I exist. That is exactly what that word means. It doesn't mean I am in our sense. Now, you could take it into I am if you wanted to say, hey, 
I am. Just I am that I am. I exist that I exist uh, in that aspect. But you cannot take this verse and take it into the New Testament when Yeshua said, I am, and, and hook it to this. When Yeshua said, hey, I am, I'm here. He wasn't referring to this, but that's what the Trinitarian translators tried to bring across when they did this. Uh, so they were not faithful in their in their works. They were faithful to their philosophies and doctrines of men, but they were not faithful to Yahweh in doing the work. And I have no, I am not worried about saying that. We got to call um, the spade is a spade, okay? Um, in this atrocious word here, when they translated. G-O-D, look what that says. It says Elohim. Elohim. And Elohim is uh, really technically should be, um, is a plural of El. And it, it means supreme. It means uh the top one, and we call them gods in the English language, but uh, it is interesting that this is a plural um, Hebrew word uh, for mighty one, and it really should be mighty ones. You can see it says here supreme ones. Um, and I guess what I'm putting out here is in the Hebrew, and I'm not here to teach Hebrew. You can go, um, there's plenty of places to learn Hebrew. It's very, very good. I'll give you a link to a very good uh, Hebrew learning center. The uh, <clears throat> And the he, Elohim... Uh, in Hebrew can be, when they put it in the plural form like that, um, is to stand for a really mighty one. It doesn't necessarily make him two or three, but it is one that is mighty. And <clears throat> so maybe they understood this, um, but, you know, Trinitarians take that and say, oh, well, God's a three-headed God. He's not a three-headed God. Yahweh is his name. And I'll show you that here. Um, we're coming down to that. So when he said, I exist, that I exist. And he said, you shall say unto the children of Israel that I exist has sent thee, sent me to you. And Elohim said, moreover unto Moses, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, The what? The Lord? Where does that come from? It's Yahweh. It says, say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. His name is yod a ba a and you can pronounce it Yahweh, or um, there's some that say it's maybe Yahuwah, but I'll guarantee you one thing it's not. It is not Jehovah. That is an abomination because the J didn't even exist. Uh, so his name in the word, if you're willing to accept it, is Yahweh. And we should accept that and we need to address our creator as Yahweh, our Elohim, and to call him Lord, to call him God, to call him 
Adonai as his name is an abomination, and that is not right. But men have <clears throat> have uh, done this to us uh, to obscure his name. If you're not calling on his name, what are you calling on? If you're calling on someone named the Lord, what are you calling on? Or if you're calling on someone named the God, there is no the Lord or the God out there. Uh, I'm sorry, this is just plain, pure truth. And you can accept it or not accept it, I guess. Um, so I will come over here. I want to show you a little bit. This is how Moses would have written the name of our Elohim and of the Messiah, but which he did write um, in a different aspect, and we'll get into that. But uh, the earliest Hebrew writing was in pictograph form. And so here's how Moses would have written it. Yod, hey, let me get this. Yod, hey, vav, hey. That's how he would have written it. <clears throat> now there were, uh, there were other, um, I don't know if you call them dialects or how do you say they were written in. There's a middle form of the Hebrew letters, which was here. Um, it's Yod, He, Vav, He, and um, then you get into modern <coughs> Hebrew, and it's written as Yod, He, Vav, He. And the modern Hebrew is really came out of the Greco-Roman Babylonian. Uh, when they were in captivity, they changed, they they assimilated the pagan letters and things into their into their language and and transposed their letters in different ways. And <clears throat> so that's that's how the language has changed over time. Um, I'll show you right here. This here is Yod A Vav. Shin Ayan, Yeshua, or as English translated, Joshua. That is the name of the Messiah, Yeshua. And so Joshua, Yeshua is his name. And that is the name that the angel spoke to Miriam. Uh, the angel did not speak in Greek to, to the Hebrews. And this name means a lot. It means Yahweh saves or Yahweh's salvation. When you get into the, we'll get into that later, but when you get into the modern, the, what we have in front of us, Jesus is uh, really... Zeus, they changed his name to Zeus to make him a god. And that's where he, he Zeus comes from. But in the modern, uh, this is what we see out here today, is uh, Yod, He, Vav, He in modern uh, Hebrew. And then Yeshua, you have a short form of it and a long form of it. Uh, the... Um, the Vav here was removed and can be, it's the way they wrote. You have two versions of Yahshua uh, or Joshua in the Bible uh, written with that and then written like this. <clears throat> I'll leave a link to this uh, uh, little study here if you want it. Um, you can get it to look at it. I will say that you, there, um, there is uh, the ancienthebrew.org site. Uh, Jeff Brenner, he has done a very, very, very awesome job. If you want to learn Hebrew, uh, if you want to get some good understanding of it, uh, you just, you can learn it. I'm not here to teach Hebrew. I'm not, 
a Hebrew scholar. Uh, I've studied it a lot. I've learned a lot in the last year on Hebrew, <clears throat> and I encourage everyone to do that. Now, as time went forward, men changed and assimilated pagan thoughts and ways into everything that Yahweh did. And that is where we're at today. We have, through the Catholic Church and through Protestantism and everything that we've got out there, we have uh, assimilated all these pagan things into the ways of Yahweh. And Yahweh said, don't do that. Don't worship me as the pagans do. And he is very, very cognizant of telling us not to do that. But yet we do it anyway. I don't, but the church does. Uh, modern um, religions do. One thing we have to remember is that the Israelites uh, were, uh, sad to say, a very hard-hearted and stiff-necked people. And they <clears throat> um, did things against God. And so um, we'll do regardless of the and especially in the Hebrew in the Hebrew we have no real questions or issues with what's out there um, and we know that right after the turn of the first century here uh, in the onslaught of the Catholic Church and Romanism uh, they were determined to wipe the Israelites uh, off of the face of the earth they were they were destroyed anything that was Hebrew and so if the New Testament and then it's some think that maybe it was all written in Hebrew because they were Hebrew writers. That uh, it was translated into uh, the Greek. Um, but neither here nor there on that. Um, but the sad thing of it is, is all Hebrew, all Israel, all Judah stuff was being erased from the world by the uh, by Satan and his workers. And so <clears throat> um, that's why we need to shoo. That's what I'm saying. We need to show ourselves approved of Yahweh because there's a lot of deception out there. And Yahweh has preserved his name for us. We know it. We can find it. Um, so we have to do the best we can with it, uh, with the knowledge, and know and understand one thing. I want to put this out here. No human being on this earth knows for sure how Yahweh pronounced it to Moses or how even Moses repeated it. I want to say that very, very clear. Um, but one thing we do know beyond any shadow of a doubt, and that is that his name was not Lord or God or Adonai. These are titles, and they are not his name. And um, so... We also know that Yah's name cannot 
be Jehovah because the J didn't even exist till the 1400s. So it's really absurd to bring over uh, a name like that into our language. Now, you say, well, it doesn't matter. What does it matter? Well, you tell me if you went to China, would you expect them to start calling you Zhong Yin? Or would you expect them to call you by Joseph or by Fred, your real name? Or are you going to have to learn the Chinese name and, and you'll never hear your name again? Um, no, it doesn't work that way. When you, If I go to France, my name is Jim. And when uh, a French uh, Philip comes over here, his name isn't Philip, it's Philippe. All right? It's in French. You don't call them uh, under the, you transliterate, you keep their name the same. And that's the same with Yahweh. Yahweh's name is the same. No matter what language you're in, no matter where you're at, transliterate it into his name. Now you may not have it perfect. Yeah, okay. Because we don't know that. Um, <clears throat> And it's the same with uh, Yeshua. We know for a fact that his name was not Jesus or Jesus. That is absolutely an impossibility. Because that doesn't mean Yah saves. That doesn't mean salvation. It doesn't mean anything. It is, I'm, it's becoming, <clears throat> well, you, this is the only video you'll hear me use those names uh, and I'm using them to give an understanding that Yahshua, which means Yahweh saves or Yah sal Yahweh's salvation, that is the name of our Messiah. <clears throat> and another note I want to put out here is that the Vav or Wa, uh, it can be found as a V or a W, depending on the scholar. But the W is newer, a newer letter in terms of language. So we still will see Yahweh or Yahweh, uh, and both are correct. I don't think there's any opinion uh, that one, no, I'm wrong. There's lots of opinions, and you will have people divided over should it be Yahweh or Yahuwah or Yahweh. You know what? When you get into that, you've missed the mark. You don't understand. You haven't, you do not understand. You are arguing, you are putting yourself above. Um, you are saying, you know how Yahweh said it, and no one does. And so you've put yourself in place of the truth. Uh, the truth is that yod he vav he that's his name and that's how we know him that's how Yeshua knew him and um, even in the in the whole New Testament um, that was changed to Theos instead of Yahweh and they took him to the Greek gods that the Greeks were worshiping and tried and changed him in the Hebrew and in the Greek um, so you can go to the New Testament and you can change the Theos to Yahweh or Yahweh. Um, and so we have uh, a couple of transliterations that this author thinks are good. And that would be Yahweh or Yahuwah for Elohim and Yeshua and Yahusha for uh, the Messiah. But again, these are transliterations. Get this? Transliterations. And uh, for me, I prefer Yahweh and Yeshua. They're easier for me to say. And then one other <clears throat> point I want to make about this is that um, you'll see Hebrew written in different fonts, different ways. I'm trying to show you on the screen here. Um, just as in English, uh, so it doesn't mean one's right or wrong. It makes it a little harder to read sometimes, but 
um, they're different fonts and, and all are okay. They get the message across. You may have to decipher them um, more than others. So we come back to Exodus 3.14 and we see where the, the Elohim said unto Moses, I exist that I exist. And he said, Thou shalt, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, uh, I exist as sent thee. And this is really, uh, we could get into this one right here as a bad translation, because look at this. Here's the word. Okay. Where does the I am come from? Well, it's there. It's just that in the Strong's and in this, they don't give you all the information. You've got to dig a lot deeper if you really want to see this. I can show you this one real quick. I'll just do this because I do have it up here in this document. And <clears throat> here, here it is. Okay, verse 14. This is what he said. And he said, You shall say to the sons of Israel. Now they translated this, I shall be. And that, that's okay. And it says, I shall be. He has sent me to you. So you see there's another word here that, that, that is not in this translation here. Where is this word? See this? See this word here? Where'd the word go? Where is it? It's here. Right here. Where'd this word go? See? They left it out. It's not, it's, this is why you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to. If you are sitting there in a King James only mode or an English Bible only mode and you won't go look at the Hebrew, uh, you are going to, you are going to find yourself deceived and you're going to go down the path of destruction because uh, there's so much out here that is not true and so I encourage all of you get to know the Elohim of our master Yeshua the Messiah Yahweh and Yeshua the Messiah is the son of Yahweh he is the lamb of Yahweh and he is the only way we can come back to uh, right standing in Yahweh with our Creator Yahweh. So I'll leave this at uh, I'll leave this for now, and we will come back to you with other studies, uh, and hopefully they will enlighten you. That we're here to encourage you to read your Bible. Get it out. Read it and study it. Stop reading your pat one doctrine verses that you want to live on. You cannot live on a one verse doctrine. The whole of the Bible is what we have to live on. Rightly dividing the scripture here a little there a little line upon line precept upon precept that is how Yahweh had the uh, His word put together and why did he do that if you read the next uh, Verse in there instead of stopping like everybody does he did it on purpose so that they would stumble and fall back backwards that want to twist his word. That's what it was for. Because if you want to twist his word, then he's gonna, he made it so you'll just fall backwards and stumble. 
if you're not being true and honest in what you do in rightness of heart. And that's what it all is all about, getting your heart right. And if you deceive your heart to ignore his name, to ignore the fact that he is the only Elohim superior. Yeah, he's got many Elohims that he's created that are are lesser. They're not really gods. It's the Elohim just means mighty one. It means those that we can't see. The angels are considered Elohim. Moses was called an Elohim. And so uh, it's the creator. He is the creator. Get that. Get that. And we are the created. Everything is the created. So, I know many will gnash their teeth and they don't, you, they won't be able to hear, but anyhow, I pray that this will show, uh, will work within you and that you will pick up your Bible and say, hey, what is this? Don't go on my word. Prove it to yourself. Prove it to yourself. And may Yahweh bless his word.